In this video, we're going to be analyzing another function, a lot like the last. The question directive is the same, and we are analyzing a algorithm that even looks very similar. If we look at this code, the stuff inside of the outer for loop, all this stuff I'm going to highlight in red, lines 4 through 7, can, looks a lot like the previous problem. So let's begin by pretending like that is what we're analyzing. Let's call that chunk of code, the runtime of it, to be t1. So let t1 of i be the running time. of lines four through seven. And to analyze that, we're going to attack it the exact same way as we did before. The for loop takes ck squared time, the expected time of t1 of i is the sum from q equals one to i. These are all of the values my random variable k could take. They go from one to i in this case of the probability that that random variable k is equal to that particular value q times the runtime when k is equal to that particular value q. This equals the sum from q equals one to i well, let's look at those things. Again, random is a function that returns a value between one and its input with uniform probability. So the probability that we're equal to a particular value here, we need to be careful, is one over the total possible number of values. So this should be one over i, not one over n, i because we are only inputting i into the function. And the runtime for a particular value is going to be cq squared. So. Let's put that somewhere too. So using that information, we have one over i times cq squared. I can factor out the one over i and the c because neither of them ha has anything to do with q. This equals c over i, the sum from q equals one to i of q squared. Let's bound this above and below. Bound it above by plugging in the top bound. Sum from q equals 1 to i of ci squared. This equals c over i times there's i things in that summation and they all look like ci squared. And we get some nice cancellation. So they all look like, I've accidentally an extra copy of c there. They all look like i squared. So this equals c i squared. Bound it below as c over i. We throw out the first half of the terms. So we go from q equals i over 2 plus 1 to i. And we're going to plug in i over 2 for q. This equals c over i. There are i over 2 terms there. And they all look like i squared over 4. So this equals c i squared over 8. So all of this stuff inside of that outer loop, lines 4 through 7 there, takes c is in theta of i squared. How can we use that? Well, to analyze this, let's say the expected runtime, et of n, is equal to the expected value of that outer for loop. So the expected value. That outer for loop I can express as a summation from i equals 1 to n. And the runtime of the inside of that for loop I called t1 of i. I can now, because expectation is a linear operator, I can switch the order of the summation and the expectation value. Write this as the sum from i equals 1 to n of the expected value of t1 of i. And 
I know what ET, what the expected value of T, T1 of I is. I could plug that in. It is equal to this. But I also know from all the bounding I did that the expected value of T1 of I is less than or equal to CI squared and greater than or equal to CI squared over 8. So this is less than or equal to the sum from I equals 1 to N. ET of uh, ET1 of I is less than or equal to CI squared. So this is less than or equal to, plug in the largest value for I. We have CN squared. So that's N times CN squared, which is just CN cubed. Why not write it like that in the first place? Let's move this out of the way. To bound it below, it is greater than or equal to, using my lower bound from what I have below, we have the sum from i equals 1 to n of ci squared over 8. Now let's split it in half, keep the larger of the two halves, and plug in n over 2. over 8. Now that is equal to n over 2 copies of c n squared over 32. That's 2 times, or sorry, 4 times 8. Which this is then equal to c n squared over 6, sorry, c n cubed over 64. And again, let's move this away so we can get some more room. So it's bounded above by cn cubed, bounded below by cn cubed over 64. So et of n, the expected runtime, as a function of n, is in theta of n cubed. So this is one way to attack this problem. We isolated the inner part of the code the part I highlighted in red there, and analyze that the exact same way as our previous example, Funk1. We then use that information to analyze the outer for loop and use linearity of expectation to make that an easier problem. Again, you could have taken this expression for ET1 and plugged it in there and then done the bounding if you wanted. That is an equally valid approach, but I did it this way to demonstrate that we can solve a problem that looks a lot simpler at first and then come back and use that information to solve the whole problem. The last question might be, what is the best case and worst case? For this problem, I'll leave it to you to figure those out to make sure that you can do that.